Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavadi Paschachadezatarine Vanchakalpa Tarubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Archana, would you, would you, would you be able to... Uh, share the screen with me and then I'll put up my book and people can see the book if they want. Okay, so like I allowed you to share the screen? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Romana, done. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're reading the Ishupanishad and we're today beginning Mantra 5. The first three mantras were about Lord Krishna being the proprietor. And then the fourth mantra was hearing about the qualities of the Supreme Lord Krishna. How he surpasses all the demigods and how he's unborn and he can overcome all of the others running. We're hearing about his wonderful qualities. We want, it's important for us to understand that the absolute truth is a person, that he has qualities. But at, this, at the same time, we have to understand that his qualities are very unique. They're unique to him. And this, well, this way, we, we want to understand that uh, the, per, the 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 personality behind this world uh, that he is very wonderful and very attractive. <laughs> Okay, so I'll read the mantra five. Tad Tad Ajati Tan Naijati Tad Dure Tad Vantike Tad Antarashya Sarvashya Tadu Sarvashya Bayataha. The Supreme Lord walks and does not walk. He is far away. But he is very near as well. He is within everything. And again, he is outside of everything. Anja <laughs> 
so you can understand there's some contradiction here because it says he walks but he doesn't walk and he's far away but he's very near and so it, it appears contradictory so when there are contradictions like this in the scriptures, it's to help us to understand that the Lord has inconceivable qualities. So this is a very important point to try to understand Krishna. We have to understand that Lord Krishna possesses inconceivable potencies. All right, so we'll read the purport, and Prabhupada explains similarly in the purport. He says, here is a description of some of the Supreme Lord's transcendental activities executed by his inconceivable potencies. The contradictions given here prove the inconceivable potencies of the Lord. He walks and he does not walk. Ordinarily, if someone can walk, it is illogical to say he cannot walk. But in reference to God, such a contradiction simply serves to indicate his inconceivable power. <laughs> ถึงพลังอำนาจที่มองไม่เห็นของพระองค์ขององค์พระขวานพระองค์ทรงเดินและทรงไม่เดินขัดข้อขัดแย้งเช่นนี้แสดงให้เห็นพลังอันมองไม
So the frog said, how big is the ocean? Is it as big as my well? And this other animal said to the frog, oh, it's much, much bigger than your well. So then the, 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 the other animals said to the frog, Oh, no, no, the, you're well. I know the ocean is much, much bigger than the, the well. So the frog said, Is it twice as big as my well? And the, the animal said, no, it's much bigger than that. He said, it's three times as big as my well. He said, no, 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 it's much bigger than that. So then the frog blew itself up and he said, Is it five times as big as my well? No, it's the, other, the animal said, no, it's bigger, bigger, much bigger than that. And the frog blew up again and the frog burst. The frog, the frog just exploded. In other words, he died. He, was, he, he could not understand how big is the ocean compared to his well. So like that, materialistic people try to understand God with their limited mind and senses. So Prabhupada explains here, he said, for example, the impersonalist philosophers of the Mayavada school accept only the Lord's impersonal activities and reject his personal feature. But the members of the Bhagavata school, adopting the perfect conception of the Lord, accept his inconceivable potencies and thus understand that he is both personal and impersonal. The Bhagavatas know that without inconceivable potencies, there can be no meaning to the words Supreme Lord. อ่าตัวอย่างเช่นนักปราชญ์ผู้ไม่เชื่อในรูปลักษณ์แห่งสถาบันมายาวาดายอมรับกิจกรรมอันไร้รูปลักษณ์ขององค์พระพลังที่มองไม่เห็นของพระองค์และหากไม่มีพลังเหล่านี้คำว่าองค์พระขวานจะไม่มีความหมายอันใดเลย So Prabhupada is just comparing the two different schools of philosophy. One is the philosophy of the Mayavadi school and the other is the philosophy of the Bhagavata school. เอ่อเซวะวันกําลังเปรียบเทียบสองสถาบันที่เอ่อสองสถาบันอยู่สถาบันหนึ่งเนี่ยชื่อสถาบันว่า
So the Mayavadas people, they, they think only of the impersonal feature of God. They only think of the Brahman. They think ultimately Brahman is the Supreme. And they say when Krishna comes in this world, he is also coming from the Brahman. But devotees of Krishna, we follow the Bhagavata school. In other words, we follow the teaching of books like Srimad Bhagavatam and the Bhagavad Gita. So the, the Mayavada people, they only accept the impersonal. They say God is just simply energy, that he is not a person. But the devotees who follow the Bhagavata, we say God is a person and he has energy. So he's both personal and impersonal. Hmm. Just like when people first heard about trains, everybody wanted to go and see the train. So some people they went to the train station and they, and they saw in the and they saw in the light in the dark it was evening already it was dark and they saw the light on the front of the train and they saw that light they thought oh that's a train and they all went home <laughs> But other people, they waited for the train to come into the station and they saw, though the, there's a light on the front of the train and there was a train, there was a driver and there were so many passengers in the carriages, they saw all the details of the train. And remember we gave the example about the blind man massaging the elephant? So one man was holding the leg of the elephant and they asked him, what's it like? And he said, oh, it's like a tree. So he's not wrong, but he's only describing one part of the elephant. It's only one, it's only the leg of the elephant. But there's so many other parts to the elephant. In the same way, people try to understand the Supreme Lord, but they, they think they limit him, they think he's only light. So, 
We have to understand there are so many features to, to the Lord. He is, he is the Lord. If, if He's not a person, then we are something, we're greater than Him because we are persons. So we cannot be greater than Him. If He's the Supreme Lord, He has to be greater than us. So He's the Supreme Person. We are persons, but we're not the Supreme Person. He's the Supreme Person. All right, we'll read some more. Prabhupada gives some more arguments to convince us. He said, we should not take it for granted that because we cannot see God with our eyes, the Lord has no personal existence. Sri Ishopanishad refutes this argument by declaring that the Lord is far away but very near also. The abode of the Lord is beyond the material sky and we have no means to measure even the, this material sky. If the material sky extends so far, then what to speak of the spiritual sky? which is altogether beyond it, that the spiritual sky is situated far away from the material universe is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. Mm. Uh, สีโชปนิชัดอธิบายเอ่อสีโชปนิชัดปฏิเสธข้อถกเถียงนี้ด้วยการเตือนเราว่าองค์พระกวารทรงอยู่ห่างไกลแต่ก็ทรงอยู่
But in the material world is a place where all the people who are not devotees live, who are not pure. And the spiritual world is described in the Bhagavad Gita. So Prabhupada said, despite the Lord's being so far away, he can at once, within less than a second, descend before us with a speed swifter than that of the mind or wind. He can also run so swiftly that no one can surpass him. This has already been described in the previous mantra. เร็วกว่าจิตใจหรือลมหรือเร็วกว่าลมพระองค์ทรงเดินได้อย่างเร็วจนกระทั่งไม่มีผู้ใดสามารถแซงพระองค์ได้เช่นนี้ได้อธิ
no difference between the body and the soul for Krishna. So his body is not material. It's not subject to birth and it's not subject to death. And it doesn't grow old either. It's an eternal body. But we have a material body. We take birth and we die. We have to understand the difference. So in the Bhagavad Gita, the verse Prabhupada is referring to, Lord Krishna himself said that foolish people mock at him descending amongst them like a human being. They do not know his transcendental nature and supreme dominion over everything. Oh. All right, uh, going ahead. Because he is full of inconceivable potencies, God can accept our service through any sort of medium, and he can convert his different potencies according to his own will. So Prabhupada is explaining that we can serve Krishna using many different ways. We can, for example, we can chant Lord Krishna's names or we can hear about Krishna. We can hear about Krishna's qualities and pastimes. We may think, oh, this is material, that you're singing, you're singing Krishna's names or you're chanting Krishna, this is material. But no, it's spiritual because it's the name of Krishna, it's not an ordinary name. And if Krishna wants, he can convert these things from material to spiritual. <coughs> material things can be spiritualized by the power of the devotees when they use it for the service of Krishna. It becomes spiritual. Just like energy, electricity, it can be used in different ways. It can be used to heat, it can be used to cool. So according to Krishna's desire, he can change matter into spirit. Just like we have in the temple, we worship the deity. So the deity may appear to be material, but Krishna converts it to spiritual energy. 
อย่างเช่นที่วัดเนี่ยเรามีพระปฏิมาแต่พระปฏิมาเนี่ยบางทีเราจะคิดว่าอ๋อทำจากเอ่อ,อทำจากวัตถุมาเลยแต่ว่าความจริงแล้วเนี่ยจากการบูชาของเราต่างๆเนี่ยมันทำให้อันได้เปลี่ยนเป็นทิพย์ไปแล้ว And when Krishna enters into the deity, then the deity can do many things. It can speak, it can walk, it can eat. So people don't understand the power. Of Lord Krishna, how his by his power he can change even material things into living things into spirit. Or in more, non-believers argue. Either that the Lord cannot incarnate Himself at all, or that if He does, He descends in a form of material energy. These arguments are nullified if we accept the existence of the Lord's inconceivable potencies. <laughs> จะหากเรายอมรับพลังอำนาจที่ที่มองไม่เห็นเนื่องจากทรงเต็มไปด้วยพลังอำนาจที่มองไม่เห็นอะไรเนี่ย so people people who are not devotees they don't understand they don't believe in the power of Krishna สำหรับบุคคลที่ไม่ใช่สาวกเนี่ยเขาจะไม่เชื่อในพลังในพลังของคริสนา And they cannot understand how Krishna appears in this world in a spiritual form. They think when he comes, he comes in a material form. They don't understand the inconceivable powers of Lord Krishna. Of course, they're inconceivable, so very hard to understand. But, but if we hear about them, then we can understand. So Srila Prabhupada explains, said, even if the Lord appears before us in the form of material energy, it is possible for him to change this energy to spiritual energy. And all the, all of the energies come from Krishna. The spiritual energy and material energy, they're all Krishna's. Everything is coming from Him. And so they can all be used for the service of Krishna. So Prabhupada explains. Krishna can come in the form of the deity. And the deity may be made of stone or wood, or it may be made from earth or clay. So people who have no knowledge, they will think, "Oh, this is a just a statue. This is not really Krishna. This cannot be God. This is just a statue." They don't understand. God is everywhere, and He can enter into that statue. He's there. But they don't understand. 
ความจริงเนี่ยองค์พระวานทรงอยู่ทุกคนทุกแห่งทรงสามารถเข้าไปในลูกปั้นนั้นได้ด้วย So we cannot see God because we don't have perfect vision. If we want to see God, we have to have perfect vision to see Him. And you don't you don't get perfect vision just by getting eyeglasses. We have to develop love for Krishna. Then you can actually see Krishna. But Prabhupada explains, even if you don't have spiritual vision, you can if you you can see Krishna by material vision when you see the deity. เสวานสอนอธิบายบอกว่าถึงแม้ว่าเราเนี่ยจะไม่มีวิสัยทัศน์ที่เป็นทิพย์หรือดวงตาทิพย์เนี่ยตอนนี้เนี่ยเราก็สามารถเห็นกิชนาดาผ่านทางพระปฏิมา So Krishna comes in the form of the deity to accept the service from the devotee. กิชนาเนี่ยทรงมาในรูปของพระปฏิมาเพื่อที่จะรับการรับใช้ของเสา So We should not think that these people are worshiping an idol. We don't worship idols. We only worship God, Krishna. Yeah, think that the worship of us, we worship the people who are the soul of us, or who are the soul of the soul. But we worship Krishna. So Krishna comes before us in the form of the deity. And we should understand the deity. The form of the deity is not just according to our own mind and senses. The form Hari Krishna, you there? Archana, your voice is breaking again. Oh, my internet connection is just not steady. Now, now it's okay, Guru Maharaj. Yes, but you have to be careful. I don't don't touch any microphone or anything. Okay, Guru Maharaj. So, Prabhupada is explaining that the form of the deity is actually an eternal form. It's not just it's not something which is just made according to our own mind and imagination, but the form of the deity is taken. It's It, it's from the scriptures. We are given the description of the form of Krishna. The problem is you have to have some devotion to actually see Krishna. If you are an atheist, or if you have no devotion, then you won't see Krishna. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says he reciprocates with everyone according to their surrender. If you surrender five percent, then Krishna will reveal five percent. If you only surrender ten percent, Krishna will only show you ten percent. You get what you you get as you surrender. Krishna will reveal. <laughs> ก็ทรงตรัสไว้ว่า
พระองค์ทรงจะสัมผัสกับสาวกเนี่ยตามระดับความสิโลลาบของเขาถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยสิโลลาบกับพิชนาห้าเปอร์เซ็นพิชนาก็จะทรงตอบสนองเราห้าเปอร์เซ็น But if we surrender fully to Krishna, then Krishna will also he will surrender he will also reveal himself fully to the devotee. And so for the surrendered devotee, Krishna is easy to reach. But if we don't surrender, if we are atheistic. If we are very attached to material sense gratification, then we will be far away. It will be very hard for us to come to Krishna. So Prabhupada explains these two words. There's two important words. One word is saguna, meaning with qualities, and the other word is nirguna, meaning without qualities. So Prabhupada explains that the word saguna it doesn't what well, it doesn't mean that Krishna has qualities which must be material. It doesn't mean that because he has qualities that he must be under the control of the material nature. And just because he has, he may have qualities. It doesn't mean that he has to have a material form. We should understand for Krishna, there's no difference between the material and the spiritual energy. Krishna is the, the source of all the energies, the material and the spiritual energy. They both come from Krishna. So we are under the control of the material energy, or we are under the control of the spiritual energy, but not Krishna. But it's Krishna's energy, so it's, the energy is under Krishna's control. So he can use the energy for whatever purpose he wants. So. So, like this, Krishna is also nirguna. You could say he's without qualities. Because he doesn't get influenced by any of the qualities, so Krishna is without qualities. And Krishna has a form. It doesn't mean that he has no form. He has a form, but it's not a material form. Krishna is the eternal form. And the, and the Brahman 
the, the Brahman, the light of the Brahman, that's just Krishna's impersonal energy. So Prabhupada then start, tells a story, he tells about Prahlad Maharaj and how Prahlad Maharaj's father, who was a big demon, asked him, he said to Prahlad, where is your God? And then his father got angry and his father said, is he in this wall? Is he in this pillar in the wall? And so Prahlad's a great devotee and he sees God everywhere. So he said, yes, he's, he's there also, Father, he's there. And so then his father broke the wall to see if the God was there and then Lord Nishingadev appeared. And Lord Nishingade fought with the, the father of Prahlad and he killed him. We should understand that God is everywhere in everything. And He creates everything by His different power. And if he wants, he can appear anywhere from anything. And just like Lord Nishringadev came out of the pillar to protect Prahlad Maharaj. But in Srimad Bhagavatam, we get the example about Lord Varaha. Lord Varaha, the boar incarnation, he came from the nose of Lord Brahma. It came out of the nostril of Lord Brahma. It was amazing. So here also Lord Nishringadev came out of the pillar and he fought with the, the demon and he killed the king and he protected Prahlad. So, so Lord Nishringadev came to to keep the promise of Prahlad because Prahlad was telling his father, yeah, he's there, he's in there. But his father didn't believe him. But then he got defeated, he got proven wrong. So that's the mercy of Krishna on his devotees. So Krishna comes in the world for two reasons. One is to give pleasure to his devotees and the other is to kill the demons. Oh, Krishna doesn't need to come to kill the demons, but he likes to come to give favor to please his devotees. 
สําหรับกฤษณะแล้วเนี่ยไม่มีความจําเป็นใดที่พร้อมจะต้องลงมาเพื่อที่จะสังหารมาวันเป็นภารกิจที่ง่ายมากแต่ว่าจุดมุ่งหมายหลักเลยเนี่ยก็คือเพื่อให้ความสุขกับสาวกของพระองค์ So this is the inconceivable power of Lord Krishna ว่าจะอันนี้เนี่ยเป็นพลังงานที่อันหาที่สุดไม่ได้ของกฤษณะ Okay uh... Oh, we've nearly finished. We'll just finish it. Might as well. Yes, sir. Yeah. No. Yes. Okay. And and the Brahma Samhita. Okay. Prabhupada's explaining. He said uh, that Krishna's everywhere in everything. He is inside of everything, and he is outside also. He is in everything as the Paramatma, and he is outside in the form of the universal form. So he he sees everything we're doing. And we get the results in the form of our fruit of our karma. We forget about our previous life. We don't remember what we did in our previous life. But we don't remember. But we get the results. It's going to come. So we should understand that the Supreme Lord God is everywhere within everything. Just just like heat and light come from the fire, so the same way there's the energy of God everywhere coming from the Supreme Lord. แรงกำเนิดของพระองค์ก็คือการที่พลังอำนาจของพระองค์ที่กระจายออกมา And we have to understand that Krishna is one, but he has he has his own personal form, and he comes to enjoy, and he enjoys loving relationships with his devotees. เราจะเราจะต้องเข้าใจก่อนว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงเป็นหนึ่งแล้วพระองค์เนี่ยก็มีรูปลักษ์แล้วสาเหตุการอาวตารลงมาของพระองค์เนี่ยเพื่อที่จะแลกเปลี่ยนความสุขกับสาวกของพระองค์ We enjoy in tiny ways we're very small we so we get some enjoyment but it's very limit very small but Krishna enjoys unlimitedly เพราะการสนองความสุขของเราเนี่ยเราก็ชอบหาความสุขอยากจะทําอะไรแล้วไม่มีความสุขอันนั้นเนี่ยมันก็น้อยมากเราเราก็กระชากก็อยากมีความสุขเหมือนกันแต่ว่าความสุขของกระชากเนี่ยมันยิ่งใหญ่มากมันไม่ได้เล็กน้อยแบบเราอ่าคือข้อแตกต่างระหว่างเรากับกระชาก He's the supreme enjoyer เราเนี่ยทรงเป็นผู้ที่เป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็นผู้ที่ทรงเป็
You have to hear it again and again. And for people who are materialistic and atheistic, then they have to hear it more. Okay, are there any questions? Yes, Gurmaj. From uh, Shyaman. Really? Shanhavi. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj Tandava Panam, please accept my humble obeisances according to Sila Prabhupan. Um, my question is, um, I heard um, your class at uh, Parikama uh, in Mayapur about uh, devotee of Goranga must cry. Um, so I need you to explain more about this topic again, Guru Maharaj. What topic? Um, devotee of Goranga must cry. Must cry. The Goranga Mahaprabhu. Yes. Goranga Mahaprabhu. Yes. Why devotee of uh, Mahaprabhu must cry? Why must cry? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Why a devotee of Mahaprabhu must cry? You have to cry for Krishna. Right? You want Krishna? You have to want Krishna very badly. You want Krishna so much that you will cry to get Krishna. We are separated from Krishna. We are here in this world and we should feel the separation from Krishna. Where is Krishna? We should be thinking, where is Krishna? When will he come? When will he come? Just like we love someone very much. And so we will think, when will they come? Oh, when will they come? I want to be with them. And so we should think about Krishna like that. We should feel separation from Krishna. This is the mood of the gopis that they were always feeling separation and they were crying. Mother Yashoda, Krishna's mother and father Nanda Maharaj, they were also crying, separation from Krishna. That Krishna has gone, Krishna has left us, when will he come back? Oh Krishna, please, where are you? Please come. So they have, we have to want Krishna very badly and we have to be looking for Krishna. There are many devotees even today. They live in Vrindavan and they're looking for Krishna. They go around Vrindavan, they go through the forests of Vrindavan looking for Krishna. Where is Krishna? When will he come? And we want Krishna. When you want something so badly, you'll even cry to get it. Just like children they want something, they will cry, no, mommy, I want it, get me, mommy, ma, and they'll cry. So we should also cry in separation from Krishna, that I'm very unfortunate, that Krishna has gone, he's left us, when will he come back? You see, this is the mood of the pure devotees. They don't say, now I'm seeing Krishna. But they say, when will Krishna come? They are very anxious to see Krishna. The pure devotee will not say, now I am seeing Krishna. Those are, these people who say, now I am seeing Krishna, they are not the real devotees. These are not the real devotees. The real devotee will say, when will I see Krishna? When will he come? And they will cry in separation from Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya taught this. 
Lord Chaitanya says in the Shikshastikam, when will my eyes be decorated with tears of love flowing constantly when I chant the holy name? When will my words choke up in separation from the Lord Krishna? When will all the holes of the hairs of my body stand on end? When will I feel quivering in my body? When will my eyes be decorated with tears of love when I chant the holy name? And Lord Chaitanya then says, considering one moment to be like 12 years or more, tears are flowing from my eyes like torrents of rain. I'm feeling all vacant in this world, in your absence. So this is the idea that the devotee, they, they feel the absence of Krishna. Where is Krishna? Krishna's gone. Krishna went to Mathura, Akrura came and took Krishna away, took him away to Mathura. He said he was coming back, Krishna told us he was going to come back in a day or two, he was just going to do some business there and come back. He hasn't come back yet, when is he going to come? Oh, when is God, we want Krishna, he should come, where is he, when will he come? This is the thinking of the devotees. This is how the gopis think about Krishna. They're crying, oh, Krishna's gone, he should come back. When is he going to come? So they say one moment is like 12 years or more. So that's why they curse Brahma. They say Brahma is not a good creator because he makes eyes which blink. Because when our eyes blink, we cannot see Krishna. That one moment, not seeing Krishna, oh, it's very painful. No, oh, I want to see Krishna all the time. And they see the world is vacant. We don't want to see the world is vacant. But if Krishna is not there, in the absence of Krishna, we think the world is vacant. There's no meaning to the world without Krishna. Oh, no. So this is why devotees cry for Krishna. Do you understand, Shaya? Yes, Guru Maharaj. This is, I can't understand this. This yes. is called separation from Krishna, love in separation. There's a saying in English, we say, absence makes the heart grow fonder. You know, when you're with someone every day, then you don't appreciate them. But when you don't see them for a long time, you think, oh, when will they come? When will they come? Oh, I want to see them. Oh, it's so, so long time they have not come. I want to see them. We become anxious. So like that, the gopis, you know, Krishna had gone away or Krishna, some, every day Krishna would go to the forest with the cows and the gopis would feel separation from Krishna. They'd see Krishna go into the forest and they think they cannot go. They have to do their work. They have to do their duties at home. And Krishna goes off to the forest. They feel separation from Krishna. They cry, they watch Krishna go, they watch him going in the forest and they feel pain in the heart and separation. So this is the mood. Lord Chaitanya taught devotees to cultivate that mood like the gopis, to feel separation from Krishna. Not to say, now I'm seeing Krishna, oh Krishna came to me, he told me I'm a very nice devotee in life. No, no. We say, when will I see, when will Krishna come? This is the mind. And then, one day Krishna will come. One day you will get, you'll be able to see Krishna. Then when you see Krishna, you want to see him more and more.
Yes, Guru Maharaj. I hope one day I will meet, will meet him. Yeah. I hope it's only. Yeah. You have to desire. We have to think of Krishna. You see, Lord Krishna sent Akrura to go to Vrindavan to bring a message to the gopis to tell them how to think of him. Because Krishna knew the gopis were feeling separation from him. So Krishna wrote a message to them and he gave it to Akrura. Akrura was Krishna's secretary and assistant. So Akrura brought the message to the gopis and he read it to them. And he told them what Krishna had instruction Krishna gave them. Krishna instructed the gopis how to feel the presence of Krishna in separation. He said, you, you know, by, by remembering Krishna, by discussing the topics of Krishna and the, the pastimes of Krishna, and describing the beauty of Krishna and the wonderful qualities of Krishna, and in this way, you will never be separate from Krishna. The more you hear about Krishna and the more you chant Krishna's name, then you'll feel Krishna is with you. You'll know Krishna is actually with you. You're not separated from him. So Krishna was teaching like that to the gopis. So you can also follow this teaching which Krishna gave to the gopis. You can also remember Krishna and talk about Krishna, fix your mind on Krishna. Yes? You understand? Yes, Guru Maharaj. I always missing him. Wonderful. So you have to all, when we're missing him, then we have to chant his name more. Then we have to read more about his, the book about Krishna and hear about his activities. All right, Arjuna, can you yes, tell? Sure, sure. Uh, การที่เราเป็นเราเป็นสาวกของเอ่อโกรังกามะพระองค์เนี่ยทําไมเราต้องเราต้องลองหายด้วยอะไรอย่างเงี้ยแสดงว่าก็อธิบายบอกว่าเ
แล้วก็การร้องไห้ให้กระชาเนี่ยมันเป็นระดับของบาวะ so to come to that ระดับแห่งระดับ to come to that stage we have to first of all do devotional service according to the rules and regulations we have to do good sadhana regular chanting And then one day we will come to that higher stage where we will feel ecstasy. Right. We want to come to these advanced levels of devotion. So the more we become Krishna conscious, the more we In increase our devotion for Krishna. One day we will feel also this ecstasy for Krishna. So Vaishnavi Maharaj has a question. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisances, all glories to Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, when we sometimes do Hari Nam, they are asking why always you are singing Hare Krishna mantra? Can we sing Damodara Ashtagam, some other uh, songs? I was wondering why they are asking like this or should we satisfy their uh, request or we should just do the Hari Nam? <laughs> yes. Uh, Uh, well, we do sing Damodar Astikam, but you, that's usually just for that one month of Kartik, we will sing it. Right? During, uh -huh. oh, yeah. during the month of Kartik, we can sing Damodar Astikam. But generally, Sankirtan, congregational chanting of the holy names, we will sing the Hare Krishna mantra. That's it. The the Maha Mantra, it's the easiest of all the mantras, right? The, there are many other names of the Lord, but that's that's the easiest mantra, and everyone can join in the chanting. They can respond easily. They don't have to learn anything very difficult. Just only three names: Hare Krishna and Rama. We have to understand the, the potency of the Maha Mantra. You see, there are many other mantras, but this Hare Krishna Mantra, this is the Maha Mantra, this is particularly recommended for chanting, for awakening our Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada particularly liked to chant the Hare Krishna Mantra. And Lord Chaitanya also, when they had kirtan, he would also chant the Maha Mantra with the people. Lord Chaitanya's main preaching with the people in Jagannath Puri every day. They would have sankirtan and they would chant the Maha Mantra. The people, unfortunate, they don't have taste for the holy name. That maybe they're They haven't. Uh, they don't do much chanting themselves. Maybe they're not chanting japa. We don't. Yes, I, don't. Huh? Is that right? Yes, 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 yes. They don't chant. Yeah, they, they don't chant. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. Really, they're not really devotees. They, you know, they they have some interest, but they're not chanting themselves. So they don't have a taste for the holy name. Yes, Guru Maharaj. But you can explain to them that that gradually by chanting, just like people with jaundice, you know, Rupa Goswami gives the example. Materialistic people they have jaundice. 
They cannot taste the sweetness of the holy name of Krishna. But if, if they keep chanting, then one day they will taste, the, they will develop the taste for the holy name. It's, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. It, it's like that, that they don't have that, they don't have any taste, they have, don't appreciate the holy name. But actually it's a holy name which we want to... Of all the names of the Lord, it's the name of Krishna which is the most powerful. Now you could tell them, well we could chant Vishnu Sahasranam, but one thousand names of Vishnu is equal to once chanting the name of Rama. And three names of Rama is equal to one name of Krishna. So we chant the Maha Mantra. It's the most powerful. And we're following Lord Chaitanya. That's why we chant the Maha Mantra. We follow Srila Prabhupada and we follow Lord Chaitanya. And they both taught us to chant the Maha Mantra, to chant the Hare Krishna Mantra. That's why we chant Hare Krishna Mantra. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. We have many recordings of Prabhupada chanting Hare Krishna Mantra. You don't find many recordings of any other mantra. But there's a lot of recordings of him chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> it's difficult to please everyone. You know, they, they come with their material ideas. Yes, <laughs> Just, just try to tell them, you know, that this is, this is what, what everybody does. This is, we're the Hare Krishna movement, right? <laughs> we're the Hare Krishna people. We chant Hare Krishna, of course we chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> that's, that's our business. Yes, <laughs> We're not known, we're not known as a, the Sitaram people were the Hare Krishna people. <laughs> yeah, Guru Maharaj. They are thinking we can sing different songs and enjoy, but this is for the pleasure of Krishna, right, Guru Maharaj? Yes. Well, you know, of course, you, you, we have different songs, just like you sing Jai Radha Madhava. You can, yeah. sing, can, you can sing that. And we, can, ah. we have also other songs, you know, there's a... Bhaktivinoda Thakur wrote this, you know, uh, Sri Nam Kirtan, Yasho ah, Mati Nandana Braja Paranakara. Yeah, yeah. Write ah, that. The, the songs, yeah. you know, the names of Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj, yes. There are diff many Vaishnavacharya songs, yes. Yeah. But, but is this Vaishnavacharya songs also equally powerful like Hare Krishna Mantra, Guru Maharaj? Well, Prabhupada said, you have to know the meaning. You should know the meaning of what you're singing. Mm. With the yes. Maha Mantra, you don't have to know the meaning. You just have to sing. The Maha Mantra is very special. You don't even have to understand the meaning. You just can just sing and you get the benefit. But the, I don't know what, what songs you're thinking about, but the other Acharya songs, when you see the Acharyas, I don't know what you mean. What song? Oh. What song do you mean? These songs, Guru Maharaj, Yashomati Nantana, Jai Radha Madhava, yeah, Bajo yeah. Remana, like uh, that. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, so, yeah. you know, we should know the meaning. Yeah, maybe we should read the meaning, but as you said, the Hare Krishna mantra has to be there, right? Yeah, usually the Hare Krishna mantra is there at the end. After this, you sing the song, then you chant Hare Krishna. Okay, with I understand Guru Maharaj. With everything, with our activities, there's always a chanting of Hare Krishna. Uh, there's in deity worship, just like we worship the deity, there will be chanting of Hare Krishna. And the Srimad Bhagavatam class, they'll be also chanting of Hare Krishna. Right? At the beginning, yes, at the beginning, before the class we'll chant, uh, maybe after the class also we'll chant for a little while. In the same way when we worship the deities, we, worship, we chant Hare Krishna. The chanting of the holy name has to be there. Right? You ask them, what name do you want to chant? You want to... <laughs> 
So, yeah, there are many, many names you can chant, but this Hare Krishna is the easiest one, most convenient one. There's so many wonderful tunes, wonderful melodies. We enjoy to chant. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. I, yeah, I'm in quarantine, so we are, I, I do a keep, a 10 minutes keep then with the children and the house and the parents come and they say, oh, again, Hare Krishna, sing some other thing like that. <laughs> and I feel that. <laughs> really upset sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Guru Maharaj, I understand now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. You, t you tell your parents. Uh, the, the, yeah. the, the four, we say Brahma Boli Chatur Muki, Krishna Krishna Hari Hari. Mahadevo Panchamukhi, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. <laughs> right? The four faces of Brahma are chanting Krishna Krishna, and the five faces of Lord Shiva, they are chanting Rama Rama. Four faces of Brahma are chanting, okay, Krishna, and five faces of Shiva are chanting Rama Rama, Rama, Rama yeah. Mahadevo Panchamukhi, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Okay. Brahma Bolo Chaturmukhi Krishna Krishna Hari Hari Mahadevo Panchamukhi Rama Rama Hari Hari. <laughs> okay. This is from Sh Bhagavatam Guru Maharaj or? No, it's a song we would sing sometimes. We use okay. sometimes on Kirtan, but sometimes we sing. You know, there's another also Maha Mantra which Lord Chaitanya used to sing, which you can also sing. Hare Harai Nama Krishna Yadavaya Namaha Gopau Govinda Ram Shri Madhusudan Ah, yes, Guru Maharaj. This one, yes, I have heard it so many times. I can learn this. Hare Harai Nama Krishna Yadavaya Namaha Yadavaya Madhavaya Keshavaya Namaha Gopau Govinda Ram Shri Madhusudan Giridhari Gopinath Madana Mohan <laughs> yes, Prabhupada Maharaj. said this is a favorite of Lord Chaitanya. I said we should sing it. He said this is also Maha Mantra. So you can, okay. you can also sing to them, to your parents. <laughs> okay, Guru Maharaj. This, yes, this has a lot of uh, different names. But tell them, 1,000 names of Vishnu is equal to one name of Ram. Rame, Rame, Namo, Rame, Sahasranama, Vishnu, Yam, Shri, Rama, Nama, Varanine. Lord Shiva told his wife, he told his wife, it comes in the Vishnu Sahasranam, that the 1,000 names of Vishnu, once chanting, is equal to one name of Ram. Yes, Guru Maharaj. And three, yes. three names of Lord Rama is equal to one name of Krishna. Krishna. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I'll try. Try to teach your parents. I think Krishna put you in quarantine so you can teach your parents more. You know, your, pa your parents are, are, they're Vaishnavas, you know, they're devotees, you know, they're Vaishnavas. But they, they just didn't get taught very much, you know. Yeah, Guru Maharaj, it's very difficult for me to handle them, actually. They get, uh, yeah. Don't try to handle them, just try to be a humble servant. Just, uh, don't try yes, to handle them. You're the servant. They're the... They're senior to you. You're under them. Mm. Be humble. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj. Hum humility. Uh, being humble means what I should do, Guru Maharaj? I, I can tell this, right? Like these things, details, I can tell them. Yeah, you should, you should tell. Humility means to offer all respect to others, right? You should. Okay. Do you offer your respect to them every morning? Do you come and touch their feet? No, Guru Maharaj, oh. not really. Oh, really? You're South Indian, you don't do that? Come on. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I do. 
come on yeah. yes guru maharaj once in a while we do not yeah i think every day right uh, yeah the first thing in the morning oh i didn't do it guru bow, maharaj bow down to them okay because they're devotees you bow down to them vancha kalpa tarubhyascha kripa sindhu bhai eva cha patita nam pavane bio vaishna bibyo namo namaha they are vaishnavas they gave you the name they gave both the, their daughters vaishnava names you know you're vaishnavi and nitya kumari you know they gave you both names like devotees so they're devotees they're so you should respect them as devotees okay guru maharaj okay guru maharaj i'll do it yes offer all respects and don't be anxious to be respected yourself okay guru maharaj remember trinada pi sunichena tarora pi sahishnana do you, <clears throat> do you know that yes guru maharaj sishtashtakram yes guru maharaj are you reciting every day i used to recite guru maharaj i uh, in geneva but now uh, here i didn't uh, i i i i will i will start actually my routine got really little bit disturbed yeah you should do it every day recite okay guru maharaj okay <laughs> Thank you Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay Archana we will stop here. Okay Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Thank you Archana very much. Thank you for your translation. Srila Prabhupad ki. Yay. Go back to Vrinda ki. Yay. Hare Krishna. What's going on? Huh? What's wrong? Huh? What do you want? Milk. N- milk now? Okay. So, oh yeah, seven o'clock. Yeah. Okay.